Welcome back. You should be logged in and this is what you should be seeing on your screen. Or if you are using a future version of WordPress, you should be seeing something a little bit differently. And as promised, what we're going to try and do in this series is get you moving forward very, very quickly so that you can start building something and feel that you've accomplished something. I've said it before, everything when you start new looks very intimidating and there's no point in me showing you each and every little thing. This is here, that is over there, and this is what happens when you press this button. Let's get to an outcome and then later on we can go into that nitty gritty stuff. I am going to show you immediately how you can build out a page that you can display on the internet. So the first thing we do is we go to pages here on the left. And when you select it, just click on it, it's going to open a library or a list of pages that you've created. And you should be familiar with this. Websites often don't contain just one page. There are many pages and each of those pages are created independently. I'll reference PowerPoint a lot. PowerPoint is a very good example. PowerPoint has many slides, but you can only project one slide at a time. Now, what we have here already is you see that there are two pages, privacy policy and sample page. WordPress believes that every time you install it, you need to bring in these two pages. You're not going to use them. You can delete them, but we want to get to the outcome. Let's create our new page and we're going to click on add new. And what's going to happen is WordPress is going to create this new page for us with a little intro screen. Welcome to the block editor. Now, the block editor, also known as the Gutenberg editor, it's named Gutenberg because while this was in development for this WordPress, it was given the name Gutenberg and it stuck with people from that time. But strictly speaking, it's just the WordPress editor or, well, also called the block editor. Don't let this terminology get the better of you. There are so many words and phrases in website design that I completely disagree with. Right, so you can go through this little introduction screen. Welcome to it. I'm going to show you instead of going through all of this, what, that, what does this mean? But the first thing you need to do is actually give your page a title so that you can identify it. And let's just call this my first try. And you can give this page any name, my first try, not page. Okay, my first try. And you need to save this page. In WordPress, saving a page so that you can see it is called publish. And you will find the publish here in the top right hand corner. All you do is click on it and then you'll be confused. It says publish again. This is to make sure that you are really confident you want to publish it because once you publish a page, anyone who's got the link to that page may find the page. In a way, this is highly unlikely because why on earth would someone have a link to a page that you've just created and they don't even know it exists? But there are those sneaky little scoundrels out there, especially if you're a big company like Apple, etc. They're constantly looking for those unpublished pages because maybe there's some leaked product info. You are not there. You are still a million years away from that myself as well. So you can safely go ahead and publish pages. But if you don't feel like that, I'll show you later how to do a draft. So go ahead and publish it a second time. Now we have a page here and we can go and view this page. How will this page look on the front end? So you see here, it says, my first try is now live and WordPress is super nice. It says, what's next? It gives you the page address. So this is going to be the page address and you can copy it. And then you can share this link with other people. Woohoo! Or you can go ahead and view this page on the front end. The front end means how it will look to a visitor to your site. Let's do that so you can get that satisfaction that you've created a new page and you actually know how it looks. So when you click on it, Ah, super underwhelming, right? Well, that's it. At this moment, your page only has three things. And that is up here, which is an header. Then down here, a footer. And then here in the middle, and then your page title. There's actually a fourth part, which is your page content. So let's go through that again. And I'm going to activate my little... Hold on for a moment. I just want to activate my web paint. Alrighty, and let's do it again. So let me show you what we have here. At the top, we have 
a header section. And this is where your site name appears as well as the menu that people can navigate around. At the bottom is a footer area. And the footer is very similar to the header, except usually you have some company details in there, contact us details, as well as more links to your pages. In WordPress, WordPress gives us then this area, which is the page title. But then there is the part that we're going to work on now, and that is your actual page content. And that is what the block editor is for building that up. Let's clear all of this and exit it. Okay, at the top here, let's talk about this section here so you can understand terminology. You will see this little area. Let me highlight it like so. This is the WordPress toolbar. When you view anything on the front end, this will appear at the top and this will allow you to go back and navigate back to WordPress or edit the page again. So look over here, there's the WordPress, there's edit site, new and then edit page what we want to do is go back to this page that we've just created so all we need to do is click on edit page and boom we jump right back into this page editor over here to me i call it the unseen canvas over here is where you're going to bring in your canvas to build out your page let me again just give you a visual representation of that it looks like a huge amount of space here. Actually, no, most of it is confined within this block, within that width. Sometimes you're going to work outside it, but imagine again, a book with margins on the side, kind of this is what is happening here. And this should be standard across all WordPress. You can actually make changes to it, but we are just starting off with it. Type to choose a block. Type type forward slash to choose a block. We're not going to do that. Take your cursor, click in there and start typing. My name is JP. This is my first try at making a web page. Now I've added text and by doing so, WordPress has added a text block for me. That is the container in which this text is appearing. Once I've done this, you will note here at the top, it says update. WordPress recognizes that you've added new content to the page. It will not display this content on the front end unless you save and update the page. Let's do that. Click on update. And after you've done that, next to it, select preview and then preview in new tab. Immediately, you begin to understand we are starting to build our page out here. We can add text and what else can we add? So let's go back and see how we bring in more content. Do so by going to this plus here, toggle block inserter and this opens all the available blocks or kind of content that you can bring onto your page you can grab and slide down you can see we have media design widgets etc 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 and what i'll do here is that i'm going to select paragraph again as i hover over it i haven't clicked or anything note that we have that thick blue line that appears on my page and that indicates that once I click on this block, it's going to drop it in there. So I click on it and see we get that one that we had at the beginning, type forward slash to choose a block. By default, this is a paragraph block. So I can click in it. And this is my second time to type in a paragraph block. Right. Let's save it again. Now, one of the things that I'll always talk about is saving. Trust me, you're going to run into cases where you're going to forget to save. You're going to think this is the modern world. Work is saved. Don't worry. No, make a habit of it. Save all the time. So you can go to update each and every time, but there's a shortcut key for that on Windows Control S on a Mac that is Command S. So Control S and you can see it updates. Unfortunately for the preview, you need to go every time and select preview in a new tab. Or I can just go to the page that is still open in my tab and refresh that. And you see here, and this is my second time to type in a paragraph block. Okay, that's super boring. You can bring in text. You understand that. Let's spice it up with something like an image. So we click here again on this block inserter and we'll find the media and image. You see again that blue line appears there. Just click on image and it drops it onto the page. Let's select Upload. This will open the Explorer or Finder from where you can upload an image. 
Now you can upload any image here. We're not going to be image specific. So I'll just select an image from my image folder and I'll click on open and it drops the image onto the page. As this image also includes text with it, you can see that the stock photo comes in with this little description here at the bottom, which we don't want. Notice everything that has happened as I brought in this image. Here at the top, we have this toolbar. This toolbar gives us a lot of control over what this image can do. Apply duotone filter. What is this one? Align the image. You can change the settings of the alignment. You can add link. You can replace it. And then here on the right, you have an inspector. Click outside and the image is deselected for all three of these that we've brought in. If you click on them, you'll see it opens a paragraph block. And here at the top right hand corner, it will say paragraph. Second one, again, you see paragraph, click on the image and you see it says image here at the top with the settings for it. Save it, control command S. Let's go to the front, refresh our page and there you go. Now you've built out your first page, you're starting to feel really good about yourself. But now I'm going to tell you something which may surprise you. I don't like this editor. This editor in WordPress has come a really, really long way and it has improved a lot over the years. But what has happened in distant past is that it wasn't such a great editor at all. And a lot of coders and smart people said, wait a minute, can I not create something that I can change this out with? Something better, something a little bit more friendlier that people can use and quickly design their web pages with. And that's what happened. And that's been happening for over a decade already. So instead of using this default built-in editor within WordPress, you can actually go ahead and find another app, install it on WordPress and use that instead. We're going to do that. We're going to use Brizzy. That is a great page builder slash site builder. So you can make pages and you can make the entire site with it. But we're going to use the free version so that you don't need to spend any money and that you can practice along all the way to the end. There is, though, a lot that you can explore within this block editor. I'm not going to go into it because for me, there are so many limitations still that I find it often a little bit frustrating. There are other plugins that use the block editor that are superb, like Stackable and a number of others that I really think do a great job. But for me, when it comes to intuitiveness, is there such a word? Intuitiveness and just ease of use. Brizzy, WordPress, Page Builder, Site Builder is a great option. And that's what we're going to do. Before we get there, we need to understand what is a theme and why a theme is so important in WordPress. Next up.